All right, well, it's 10.30 on Friday, not Thursday at 4. It's time for the Real Estate Happy Hour Show. Yeah, we're back. Uh, missed yesterday, but we are bringing you a special edition on Friday, huh? Special edition. We uh, just had some conflicts yesterday. It's busy, 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 isn't it? But the heart of rock and roll is still beating. It is. Look, hey, Huey well, Lewis is one of those guys. We can't go wrong. Little Huey Lewis in, in the house. Man, what what a great guy he is, and what a great time we're going to have today, man. Uh, how's your week going? Going pretty good. Going good. It's Friday, so that's, that's looking up. You got a lot of, uh, man, again, every time I call you, you are busy. Right now, it's good, man. It's busy right now. I mean, the, the interest rate's staying so good. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk uh, about, obviously, the interest rates. We're going to talk about everything you need to know about FHA loans. I thought, you know, hey, let's get back to a little primer on that because this, I don't care how long I've been in this business and he's been in it longer. Uh, FHA, I hear so many people say it's a first-time home loan and it's just not a lot of people and he's going to fill us in on that. And then uh, 10 things uh, that make your home impossible to sell. We're going to talk about that. But off the top, last Sunday, I had one of those embarrassing moments. It wasn't my fault. We, Julia and I, I, I take Julia, Amanda's working last Sunday, packed out. Have you ever been to Sarah's Cafe? No, I haven't. Uh, man, great. By the way, great. Down Pelham. You'd miss it if you saw it, but packed out. I go to pay, I go to check out to pay. And well, this waitress decides to bring a thing of full of drinks. And then on the outside of her is the line of people trying to get in. Well, I decided to reach for my wallet with my left hand. And of course, I'm I do it like I'm boxing out in basketball. Yeah. I I sent this tray of drinks, literally, <laughs> onto everybody in their Sunday best. <laughs> And, like, I'd never felt this small. And then, of course, my, my initial reaction was, I go, not my fault. <laughs> Which, in retrospect, was the wrong thing to say. Might have been, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, who brings a tray of drinks? Hey, it's a busy place, man. You got to watch out. I mean, But Swecker's the one to do it. I'm telling you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, want to share with everybody this week, too. Uh, I watched my wife, and, and you know, I've used it some, but Venmo, if you're familiar with Venmo, Clark Howard came out with a very good, uh, just something we all need to take into account, is that Venmo security is, if somebody gets access to your Venmo account, they got access to your primary checking account, if that because that's what most people are tying to, and Venmo does not have many scop gaps, including they have barely two-factor authentication. They only have two-factor if the computer or the phone is not recognized. So if you've already activated it on your phone and, and they get in, they're in. A couple things he said. Don't link your primary bank account. Get a secondary checking account that you're going to use on PayPal and all these. Just transfer money over there. Keep it there. Heck, it's not hard to keep a couple hundred dollars because that's normally what you're paying on Venmo. The other thing was set the privacy settings to private so that no one can see you where you're sharing offline what your name is or your, your, yeah. your little yeah, I know a lot of accounts now have the fingerprint scanner on them too. So, Oh, do they really? Yes, I didn't know that, that. That could help. I know my, the apps on my phone for logging into those things, not Venmo, but uh, for my regular bank account. Has, yeah. It has a fingerprint security. You know, the other one that he was mentioning don't never use is Zelle. If you ever seen Z E E L Z E L L E it's, it's in the back end of all the banks saying you can instantaneously send money and they're owned by the banks, but no security. And he's like, why would you give your primary, I mean, there, it's like a key to the city, right? And by the time, and the problem is not that you may not get it back. You really may not get it back because they're going to make it so hard to get it back because no one wants responsibility. There's no one to hold accountable. PayPal, even though Venmo owns PayPal, but PayPal has got so many more years of securing the account. Just wanted to share that with you. But uh, Excellent. Moving on to interest rates. Excellent. This interest week. rates right now not moving around much. Uh, Thirty years still around four point oh seven. Fifteen year about three point five three, and that's on average. What I've been really impressed with, David, is the is the spread between the thirty and the fifteen, right? You know, I don't think we've seen it this wide in a long time, right? In the sense of that sitting at three and a half, and it seems like the the thirties moving more than that fifteen is. Right now, it's uh, about half a point gap between the two of them. Wow, massive difference. I mean, uh, you know, one thing that we were talking about the other day, Amanda and I were in, talking about going towards retirement, is, you know, you get to that age like we are, of scaling, not scaling down the price house, but if you can't afford to get into that 15-year note, 
you're probably going to be better off, aren't you? I mean, in terms of, you think of it this way. The first 10 years, you're not going to pay much principal down. Substantial. But in the 15, you're going to pay a ton down. And it can mean the difference. If you're in your early 40s or something like that, it can mean the difference between a retirement where you don't have a mortgage and a retirement where you do. And that's a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, just take a look at it. It might work for your situation. So moving on to FHA loans, um, just some stuff we wanted to kind of bring back and highlight, uh, talk about FHA loans and answer some questions that people might have. These are government-backed mortgage mortgages insured by the Federal Housing Administration. Uh, basically, they you know they write the guidelines. They change these things from time to time, uh, obviously. But you know it's, it's not exclusively for first-time home buyers. I think is one thing that you wanted to point out. Uh, minimum credit scores. Okay, I want to talk about this a little bit because the minimum credit score is really five hundred. Uh, a lot of places are five eighty. Some you know have overlays, and overlays just mean that. Let's say, for example, a fairway, uh, there's there's rules for FHA, but then there's ways Fairway wants to do business. Which Fairway is your brokerage. Yeah, or so Fairway is our, our lender. Um, so it's the way Fairway wants to do business. So Fairway's minimum is a 580. FHA's minimum is a 500. Is that different? I mean, most people are going to be more conservative like y'all. Most. Yeah, most. Some are going to try to do them. But listen, th there's a very small percentage of people that are um, looking to do a loan at 500 credit scores. Because think about it, you're going to have, if you've got a 500 credit score anywhere from 500 to 579, there's going to be reasons why your score is down there. Okay. <laughs> really? So those, those items are going to need to be addressed. Um, now, if you're below 580, you're going to have to put 10% down instead of 3.5% down. Oh, wow. I didn't know Again, that. Again, people that typically run into their big issues with credit are not your ideal candidate for savers, okay? Gotcha. So poor credit does not translate to having more as a down payment. So anyway, I think this is a very small percentage of the population that's going to have a 540 credit score and 10% to put down on a mortgage. I mean, that is crazy. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Tammy. We had to uh, switch to Friday. We missed yesterday. That's right. She knows I was at the Top Golf having a good time. But uh, anyway, so... That's, that's a little bit on FHA loans. I did want to highlight that it is possible to do it below 580. It's just you're going to run into some other issues, and it's going to be a little bit harder to get done. This is a big one for me. What's that? The debt to income. Debt to income, 43%. Surprisingly, that is just a guideline. Listen, I've gotten these approved up to 57%. Any you know Over 56%. Who makes that decision? Uh, automated underwriting. Autom automated. Yeah. Everything's automated. Yeah, we automate, it, automate the underwriting. We run it through what's called an underwriting engine, um, which gives we can get approvals, you know, sometimes over 56% debt to income. Wow. FHA, now VA is the most lenient on debt you to income. You said 60. Last week we FHA, talked about that uh, and it's 60, right? FHA is right there with them, though. They are very lenient on credit and lenient on uh, debt to income. This is interesting. This next thing he's going to talk about is interesting because Tammy uh, is here and I don't know if we knew the agents. I don't think we knew this, that it actually increased from the 296 to 314,000. Now wow. and I, I recently had an agent that was listing a house and said she did the, the bar, the seller didn't want FHA in the notes on the listing because I guess the seller didn't think that an FHA buyer would be a good buyer. <laughs> but but with the three hundred twenty five thousand, I, I did big. the numbers. Three hundred twenty five thousand, three and a half percent down gets you just under this. So three twenty five. If you're buying a house at three twenty five or lower, you qualify. Yes, and hey Mario, how you doing? So three twenty five with a three and a half percent down gets that base loan amount. Then we'll talk talk about this a little bit more in a minute. That base loan amount underneath that three fourteen limit. So more options there for different price points is all that is. Uh, here's another good one. Bankruptcy. Okay. Bankruptcy in this article that we put together said must wait two years. And that is not true. There are two different types of bankruptcies. A so chapter seven where you wipe everything clean. You don't That's pay, the bad one. You don't pay anything off. Chapter 13, you actually set up a payment, payment plan. plan. Um, and you can actually get financing right now, uh, actually working on one that is less than two years out of bankruptcy. Is there a year minimum though? or There's... there's a minimum of 12 months of payments have to have been made. 12 months of payment. Oh, Under gotcha. the bankruptcy, under the Chapter 13. 
Chapter seven, you're going to have a tough time doing anything less than two years. Interesting. It's possible, but very difficult. And we're seeing more and more people having credit card debt, so this could become an issue in a year or so. Yeah, so so interesting here. I also want to share another story. Um, somebody I've talked to recently and out of bankruptcy. Now, it's important to reestablish credit out, outside of bankruptcy. Okay. Okay. But let's don't get carried away. <laughs> I talked to somebody who opened 30 credit cards in one year. <laughs> For no reason. 30. What are they doing? I mean, that's that's two or three a month. I mean, That's a that full-time is, job. Just that's to... work. That is work. So, man, be smart. That's... Did you think, what did you think, honestly, when you saw? I was shocked. I mean. Are uh, you sitting there going, this can't be real? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just kept scrolling down the credit report. It was like, again? Does a, it a end? New one, a new one. A new And every name under the sun. Any store out there that you can imagine going shopping, they had one. So, uh, look, this is a pattern. Uh, when you get out of bankruptcy, we're looking at behavior, okay? Correct. And we don't want to repeat the same behavior that got you there because now we're giving you a loan and we're going to be, we want to be number one on, on your, so that you're paying back. let me guess, you were not happy with their behavior. Yeah, so the behavior shows that you're, you're getting back into the same routine of, overextending yourself through credit. Gotcha. That's the reason why you got in bankruptcy the first time. So, man, just just be smart. I wanted to share that. It's a, a crazy story. Uh, foreclosures, three years. Man, there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah, and, and again, these these things, bankruptcy and foreclosure, both are going to be, your, your big hang up here is going to be credit score. How quickly can you get your credit score back up to a reasonable range to, to look good for finance. So just because you're three years out and your credit score is still 520, we still got yeah. a problem. Yeah, you still got still got big problems. David, who who is the FHA loan best for? The, the best loan, in my opinion, okay, is going to be somewhere, someone in the 600 to 650 credit score range uh, with a little bit of a down payment. And why is that? Because in, in that range, you know, you, you take some hits on the conventional side to interest rate and mortgage insurance. Okay, so conventional can get kind of priced out um, based but, on that. So you're credit saying score. the conventional, it, even though they would qualify, it would cost so much more. Yeah, your payments are going to be your, your monthly payments are going to be more. Understand. Um, so credit leniency and low down payment; those are the two things that that really make you want to look at an FHA loan. Yeah. So, uh, are there any special closing costs that are associated with an FHA? Because I know you know everybody hear you hear that, and then so is there anything? Not Unique really. To it? Not really. I mean, they've got uh, upfront mortgage insurance, which we're going to touch on next. Um, hey, talk, go ahead and talk about that. Then. So you got upfront mortgage insurance, which is one point seven five percent. So if you got whatever your purchase price is, you're putting down three and a half percent, and then we're we're going to add one point seven five percent in upfront mortgage insurance premium back to that loan. We're financing it in. Okay. Oh, so you're adding it to it. Yeah. So so we're adding that back to the loan amount. Um, and financing that back in. And you also have annual mortgage insurance. Now, any loan that you put less than 20% down, you're going to have the annual mortgage insurance, but the FHA you've got up front as well. And can I get rid of this PMI? No, that, that PMI is on there for the life of the loan. So I've heard some real estate agents complain about why would you put anybody into an FHA when the MI doesn't fall off? And there's just, there's so much... Uh, misinformation and misunderstanding. Well, teach us a lesson about, here. Take us to church on this. About the mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is basically designed to allow you to get into a house with less money down. That's okay? why it does. It insures that's, the That's limit. what it is. That's all it is. Um, I did I did some numbers on an FHA loan versus a conventional loan. Let's say roughly around a 640 credit score. Okay. And over 30 years, yes, the conventional loan is going to be better because that mortgage insurance is going to fall off. But in the beginning, the FHA payment is going to be less. We know people, so many people are payment sensitive. And your 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 income's lower on the front end. So it's going to take you right? I mean, it's not, you right. needed it now. Right. So if you do the if you do the math and do the break even, the break even on the conventional loan where the conventional loan would be better for you was north of 20 years. So in year 21, 2, <laughs> 3 and 4 you're doing better, but who you're never going to be there. You're, you're not going to find many consumers that are in this boat, okay? Credit you don't base score, a decision on that. Credit score, low down payment that are looking out 20 years. So 
Um, you know, yes, the, the mortgage insurance stays on for the life of the loan, but again, we got to do the numbers and see what's going to be best for your David, financial situation. David, tell us this. You, do you know, in a payoff situation, it used to be if you rolled one day into the month, you had to pay all the interest for the remaining month. That has changed, has it not? I believe that has changed. That's on a refinance. Oh, on a refi. Yeah, because you're okay. refinancing an FHA loan. Gotcha. So that wouldn't apply on a purchase, but yeah, I think they did change that. That used to be if you rolled you know, into a month. Yeah, you had to pay the, the whole the entire interest. Yeah. Well, tell me this. What about, we're getting a lot of questions right now with the lack of inventory about people wanting to do repairs to houses. Can I get an FHA loan and also uh, do these repairs yeah, and fund them in? Yeah, it's a renovation loan. Uh, it's a 203K loan. Um, a lot of, it is more popular. It's funny though, a lot of people I talk to don't end up doing it for several reasons. Um, but one of them is that the interest rates are higher. So, really? you know, you might be looking at 5% versus four and a half or four and a quarter uh, on the renovation loan. So, why so is that? It's just a different type of loan. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, it's, a, it's a specialized niche product. You wanted it, you got it. Yeah. So, um, so it's a higher interest rate. But you're allowed to roll in the costs of the um, repairs on the FHA loan. If the house is not livable, another good thing about the FHA renovation product is that if the house is not livable, you can actually roll in six months of payments where you don't have to make payments for the first six months while you're not able to live in the home. I, I will say this. I know David well enough to know that you hate that idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of these, but... Of that idea, I'm saying the six yeah. months. I mean, you're right. like, what in the world? But, but for some situations, uh, this is a good loan, and it and it helps rehab some houses that need it. Okay, and and um, if you're if you were somebody that had the choice between going VA and FHA, where are they going? I would go VA. Okay, if that, you have the option to go VA, you go VA all day long. All right, moving on. 10 things that make your house impossible to sell. These things will make your house impossible to sell. Love this list. First one, stinky odors from pets, smoking, cooking, Indian, Greek foods. That is our biggest thing. Uh, you know, uh, just cat boxes, dog beds. Man, they... Tammy likes our ideas, though. Oh, that's, that's perfect, though. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, but uh, look, but is it, look, I understand the the cat odors. Okay? Uh, well, you got it, right. Yeah. So no, you don't have it in your house, but you got cats. But it happens, you know, from time to time. Because well, you're letting yeah. them poop in the, I mean, in the house. Yeah. I mean, but uh, the smoking would be a big one. I mean, that that's a smell that's almost impossible to get out of a building. Yep. Right. Um, and you know, Tammy knows this. The worst thing you can do though to these odors is try to mask it. I love it when we go into a showing and it smells like dog, and then they take some neutralizer that smells like floral scent. Now you got the poop smell from the dog with floral scent from yeah. something, and it smells awful. It now smells it's even worse. worse. Yeah. Um, the next one. Next one is dirty bathrooms. I mean, wow, right? I yeah. mean, look, women, the, women, three places most important. The kitchen, the master bedroom, master bath. Have, right? you, ever, have you ever had some somebody that where the bathroom didn't work? Oh, so wow. somebody used the bathroom and then they couldn't flush it or whatever. Oh, I'm sure. That, yeah, that'd be exciting. Yeah, I had it. I mean, I've had the agent Try call to avoid me. That. Hey, I've had the agent call me and say the showing agent call me and say, "Hey, my client stopped up your toilet." Not you know, and I'm like, "Well, that is weird on all accounts." Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, pets at house during showings. Uh, yeah. You know, I've had I had somebody back out of a, a contract here recently just because. Um, the, the dog hair that they saw in the house and the wife wasn't, uh, I guess, allergic to animals or something. I well, mean, yeah. it's something you can clean, but look, some people just don't like having pets. So you need to remove any sign of them at all, right? Yep, absolutely. And, and you know, we, we had a deal fall through this week on one of our listings where... Uh, Winterized toilet. Yeah. Oh, yes. Pooping a win the Yes. Yes. That, that's another one. I don't know if she wants mubs to poop in the winterized toilet. No, or? but she, I know what she's talking about. Well... The the I can but work on that one, Tim. It's difficult. We had a deal fall through just yesterday because somebody the the covenants in a neighborhood, a normal residential neighborhood, said no more than two pets. Now nobody's ever going to find out, but I get it. They wanted an approval, so they the buyer in their due diligence period went to the HOA and asked for a waiver so they could have their zoo at the house. Well, they didn't get it, so we're losing the deal. Um, 
which is a little ridiculous that we're choosing pets over a comfortable place to live. But anyway. There you go. Hey, pests. This, this, is, this is a big one here in Alabama, at least, where it's so hot, it's, it's humid, all those things. Uh, Seller needs to make sure there's no evidence of bugs. You know, those ladybug type things are all over the windowsill. Get them out of there. Uh, roaches, ants, uh, spiders, mice. Snakes, I had them in my huh? car. Uh, hey, Carl. Yeah, I, I did. I did have a, a snake in a house at an open house, which was interesting. It was a pet. Yeah, I told you about it the other day. I I, I was uh, uh, Tammy. I don't know if I said it on the happy hour, but I was showing a house the other day, and walked in the house, looked up to the left, and there is the biggest rat snake with his. He's just lounging right above our heads in the gutter. In the gutter, tail hanging down. About died. Uh, next one: musty and damp area of the home. Look, there is no. You know it when you're there. You know it because you can smell it, feel it. It just becomes you when you feel that dampness. Yeah, it just smells bad. Uh, and that, that is, that's probably one of the biggest uh, repair concerns is where this is coming from and how much it's going to cost to fix. So and, and, buyer's and, not going to like it. And then don't be running that, if, if best you can, the dehumidifier. <laughs> if you're running this monster dehumidifier during the showings, Probably a pretty good idea that there's a problem. Yeah, you're going to have to either... You, best best case scenario is to fix that problem or disclose it and negotiate it. And the other thing you can do, just so you know, if, is that if you do not have a return air vent, the best thing you can do to get rid of these odors, put a return air vent into the uh, basement. A lot of basements don't have them, so they have one-way air coming in, but they don't have a return air. Getting that air to be able to be recycled, right, and and get that moisture out naturally. And that's what happens in your regular house, right, because air is circulating. Otherwise, yeah. in Alabama, it wouldn't. But uh, the next one. Clutter is, is a huge problem because clutter not only looks bad, but clutter is one of the reasons why you have the damp smell, the pests, um, you going on? You know, yeah, you the, can go the, up the, the list. Odors, all, all of that, all of that stuff comes from the clutter, which is crazy. I know Tammy and I have talked about it before. Um, man, you got to clean up. I mean, it's hard for people to see their stuff in your house, right? A buyer uh -oh. wants to vi envision their stuff in your, when when all of your junk is in the way. It absolutely is awful. Um, it's just. People don't care about your stuff. They care about theirs. And people, it's awful. Uh, the next is the curse of darkness. Man, dark houses stink, right? Because you can't see it. People think, oh, man, this house, look at this. Man, it's going to cost us a million dollars to fix this. Yeah, it looks nicer if it's brighter. It just does. And 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 I can't tell you how many times we've come in to get the pictures done and, and uh, light bulbs are out. Hello? Look, even an, even Alabama fans can turn in a uh, light bulb, right? I mean, I get it. They they say that about us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, but it's such an easy thing. Next one is the present seller. So this is this is just not weird. a great idea for the seller to be there. I, I mean, it is weird. Like, you know, we've got opinions. And, and naturally, you probably focus on, I mean, if you focus on the stuff you don't like because that's where you're going to spend money and time fixing or if you focus on what you love about it, either way, you you kind of don't want that conversation around the seller. No, and it's just weird. Leave. 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 Next thing is first impressions. Yeah, I mean, first impressions. I, I can't tell you. We talked about a few weeks ago. In Homewood, all we got to do in, like, you know, the Edgewood area, put a bunch of flowers out there, beautiful flowers, paint on the front. It's the curb appeal. It's a curb appeal. But they're, remember, they're making that decision from the time they pull up in front of the house to the time they park. They're looking for a reason not to like it. They're not looking for a reason to like it, right? We don't go in there going, I love it, and I haven't seen it. Yeah. We're going, I'm probably not going to like it, but I need to be convinced. Yeah. Right? Next one is crummy closets. Uh, just Okay, so you, you cleaned up the house, but you just crammed it all into a closet. Well, right? it has a downside to that, and that is that now you have no storage space for your stuff. Yeah. Is the message you're sending. Right, right, right. And and I mean, think about it this way: if if all women have shoes and purses and things like that, if the, if, if you got them stacked in there so that everything just doesn't fit, guess what? The women are going to think no room for my stuff either. That's right. That's right. But, so uh, cleanliness is the key. Moving on to the uh, stock section. You know what's interesting? Um, I did uh, been watching. You know, obviously the trade wars with China has been. Bringing the market down, I think last week or maybe this week opened yeah, up yeah. six hundred points down on Monday. I don't We're know. back. 
Uh, so it's coming back, but you know, that might've been a, a decent opportunity. I think it was a dip of about 3%. I think I did the math. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So it might've been a decent opportunity to buy a few things, uh, maybe go long in a couple of positions you wanted to, to get a, get a discount on. Uh, not a huge move. I don't think it's a huge problem, but obviously we did have a little pullback. Recently. I, and I think, I think one of the best things you can do is if you're wanting to play in the market, look at the ETFs, look at the, uh, uh, mutual funds, because right now, if you're trying to play individual stocks, this stuff isn't making sense at times, right? I mean, you're seeing people whip earnings, meaning good, just really kill earnings, and somehow the sentiment on Wall Street goes down for reasons that are unknown to us. Probably David's talked about it before with all this robo trading and tax harvesting and things like that, stuff that you can't control. Yeah, and I want to bring up something real quick. Uh, on, it's, it's called DRIP, Dividend Reinvestment Program. Uh, if you guys own shares of companies that pay dividends, look into this because obviously some of them you're going to be holding for a long time. And instead of getting that dividend, you know, they, they will give you a percentage, a, a portion of a share, whatever that would equate to. They're not charging you a commission on the purchase, but they're giving you, let's say, a tenth of a share instead of, well, whatever you can afford. So, if it was a hundred if it was a hundred dollars, and they paid a ten dollar dividend to you, what David's saying is that if the hundred dollar share, they would give you one tenth of a share for ten dollars. They would just reinvest it. Now you have one point one shares. Right. So that's a, that's a great way over time to make a lot more money to increase your gains in the stock market. And we, so you and I talked that. about it with PCI that we've talked about the Pimco fund. I started with one hundred and eleven shares. It, the beginning January of 18 as this experiment started, and now I'm at 126 shares without ever investing one more dollar. And, yeah. it, and what's really great is that you look and see how much you've made. It doesn't tell you the whole story, right? Because that stuff was put right back in. Yeah, so look into that. It's called DRIP, Dividend Reinvestment Program. And let me Do that this, on your positions that are paying dividends. That, that's a good question. So you're talking, there's two ways to do it. One is straight through the company. Some of them have those. But you're talking about within your TD Waterhouse yeah. or your TD Ameritrade. Or... Yeah, yeah. You can just log in and and choose the the drip, so it'll invest those instead of. Uh, All right. Instead of paying you. Well, guys, hey, thanks for uh, watching the happy hour this week. Hey, don't forget about the podcast edition. Anywhere you can find great great pod, yeah, great Look pod. Look, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, all those great places. Anyway, we'll be back on Thursday, 4 o'clock next week with this guy. We'll see you then. All right, have, have a great a gr weekend. Have a great weekend. Bye. War Eagle.